In February 1933, the Shanghai newspaper Star Daily conducted a reader's poll to name the public's favorite Chinese film actresses. In third place came Ruan Ling Yu, whose gut-wrenching depictions of proletarian suffering routinely gripped the hearts of viewers. Second place was claimed by Chen Yu Mei, who shortly thereafter married and disappeared from cinema screens. And topping the list in a landslide victory was the Cantonese starlet Hudia. Also known by her English name, Butterfly Wu, Hudia was China's premier film star of the 1920s and 30s. She was a role model for young women, an ambassador for visiting Hollywood stars, and a diverse talent who witnessed the many technological and political changes that swept over China in the early 20th century. Although many of her films are now lost, she remains an essential figure in Asian film history, dubbed by the aforementioned Star Daily Poll as the movie queen of China. China's movie queen was born Hu Baojuan on March 23, 1908. Her father worked for the Beijing Fengtian Railway, which meant the family relocated on a regular basis. Growing up in various communities such as Shanghai, Beijing, and Yingkao proved integral to her later career in cinema, as she mastered numerous Chinese dialects from a young age. By the age of 16, she had become interested in acting and applied at Hongshan's Shanghua Film Academy. There, she studied not only acting, but directing, cinematography, drama history, and Hollywood films, which at that time dominated the Chinese box office. She also gave herself a stage moniker. Looking out her window one day, she spied a winged insect and decided upon the name Hudia, a homonym for the Chinese word for butterfly. Following an inauspicious debut in the film Battle Exploits, for which she only had a supporting part, who attained the lead role in the film Resentments, where she played a woman who attempts suicide over her husband's infidelity. The release of this film was followed by Hu signing her first studio-exclusive contract with Xiao Zhe Wang's Tianyi Film Company. Over the next two years, she starred in a broad spectrum of films, including an adaptation of Shakespeare's The Merchant of Venice, for which she played the Portia equivalent. However, she quickly became dissatisfied with her assigned projects, deeming them, quote, long on entertainment values, but short on artistic achievements. And so, when Tianyi underwent restructuring in 1928, she declined to renew her contract, and instead joined rival company Ming Jing. Ming Jing's creative partners took an immediate liking to Hu, and cast her as the lead in 1928's White Cloud Pagoda. Her adversary in this picture was played by Ruan Lingyu. Despite the hostility between their characters in the film, the two women immediately became friends, frequently taking dance lessons together in Shanghai, and remaining close even after Ruan left the company. When White Cloud Pagoda became a smash hit, Ming Jing added Hu to the cast of their ongoing fantasy series, Burning of the Red Lotus Temple, wherein she played the magical character of the Red Girl. By year's end, whose name and image was appearing in ads and on products such as calendars, and she was earning a monthly salary of 2,000 yuan, the highest paid Chinese film star of the age. The public adored her, and her fluency in Mandarin promised a smooth transition to sound film once technology had progressed. Of course, stardom had its drawbacks. Although she regularly participated in welcoming Hollywood visitors to China, and likewise starred in China's first noteworthy partial sound film, Hudia was also victimized by the yellow press. When she was en route to a film shoot in Beijing, Japanese troops stationed in northeastern China detonated a bomb on their own railway tracks and blamed the incident on local Chinese, 
which led to the annexation of Manchuria. When Hu Die returned to Shanghai, she learned of rumors that claimed she had distracted Manchuria's warlord on the night of the invasion, and thus prevented him from defending his territory. She also fought negative publicity stemming from her personal life, namely her legal battle to end a previous engagement. Still, she trudged forward with a number of successful films, including Cosmetics Market and Zheng Zhenqiu's 1934 masterpiece, Twin Sisters. Often cited as the best film of Hu Die's career, Twin Sisters features the actress in a dual role, as siblings, one of whom leads a life of vain wealth, the other languishing in poverty. Body doubles and split-screen technology allowed both characters to appear in shots together. The film ended up saving Ming Jing from bankruptcy, and was accompanied to Russia by Hu when she went on a European tour in 1935. While overseas, the actress was approached by a Chinese delegate, who asked if she had heard about the suicide of her friend, Ruan Ling Yu. Hu initially believed the news to be sick humor, and so she politely laughed at the delegate, taking his words seriously only when presented with recent headlines from Shanghai newspapers. It was true, her friend had died at the age of 24. The fake laughter she'd given was quickly misconstrued as a vain movie star gloating over the death of a rival. Deeply wounded by the gossip, and by the loss of her friend, who dedicated part of a speech she gave at the Moscow International Film Festival to Ruan Lingyu. In 1938, she even starred in a remake of Ruan Lingyu's most famous movie, The Goddess. Titled Rouge Tears, the remake was a critical disappointment, and went unmentioned in both Hu's memoirs, as well as those of director Wu Yonggang. In an interview, Hu simply lamented that she was, quote, not as good as Ruan Lingyu. Not long after her return to Shanghai, Hu settled down with businessman Pao Yosheng. Although she didn't fully retire as some expected, she did limit her career henceforth to only one or two films in a year, and ended up fleeing to Hong Kong after the Japanese attack on Shanghai of 1937. Hong Kong itself was overtaken by Japan four years later, at which point Hu and her husband and their children fled to Guangdong and then to Guangxi province. There, they met another adversary, in the form of Chinese master spy Dai Li, who became obsessed with Hu, determined to part her from her family. Dai even went so far as to assign Hu's husband to an outpost far from home, and authorized construction of a mansion for him and the famous movie star to live in. Hu and her husband had nearly signed a coerced divorce agreement when Dai was killed in a plane crash, at which point they returned to Hong Kong. Pan Yosheng died of liver cancer in 1958, and Hu Die's career drastically slowed with age. At this point, she mostly played motherly roles in movies produced by the Shaw Brothers studio. Though there was a major bright spot in 1960's Rear Door, which won Hu the Best Actress Prize at Tokyo's Asian Film Festival. Nevertheless, her days as China's leading film star had passed. She remarried, retired for good in 1966 and nine years later, emigrated to North America. She avoided publicity, changed her name, and when she at last visited Hollywood, it was only as a tourist, and she did not receive the VIP treatment she'd given people like Charles Chaplin and Anna Mae Wong in the 1930s. Following the death of her second husband in 1986, Houdia began dictating her memoirs, which were published shortly thereafter. The book was first serialized in Taiwan, and began appearing in mainland China not long after. However, their author would not return to Asia to publicize them. Hu Die suffered a major stroke in April 1989, and died in her home in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, on the 23rd of that month. Her alleged last words were, Butterfly is flying away.